As plants have a special ability which can grow into complete plants by small parts of their body, hence researchers have developed a modern technology to produce large-scale seedling by using these unique characteristics. Plant tissue culture is an aesthetic cultural technique for cells, tissues, organs and some other parts of the plant to be formed into a functional plant under defined physical and chemical conditions in vitro. The process which involves isolating any growing point from healthy plant and place on cultural media. Once successfully established, the plant doubled up in number by every subculture. Over time, thousands of identical plants that are then shipped and grown by commercial breeders around the world. Plant tissue culture represents an efficient method of plant propagation and has become an important part of both horticulture and agriculture. For the half ms medium preparation, 5 ml of each ms macronutrient, 0 0.5 ml of micronutrient, 0 0.5 ml of sodium iron eta, 0 0.5 ml of B5 vitamins were added into 500 ml of plastic beaker. Then, 2 gram of sucrose, which consists of 2%, was added. The solution was dissolved completely with 50 ml of distilled water in a beaker using magnetic stirrer. After dissolving, the pH was adjusted to 5.8 using 1N sodium hydroxide or 1N of HCl. By using a measuring cylinder, the volume was brought up to 100 ml. Then, 0 0.9 gram of agar was added. The beaker with the medium was microwaved for 5 minutes until all the agar was melted. After microwave, the medium was poured into a conical pot. The cap was screwed loosely and was sent for autoclave at 121 degrees Celsius, 15 PSI for 15 minutes. Now the medium is ready to be used. One of the procedures in plant tissue culture would be the explant preparation and inoculation, where most explants requires surface disinfection before they can be placed in culture on the nutrient agar. The following steps were conducted using standard aseptic techniques. Firstly, 95% of ethanol was added and let to soak for 2 minutes. During the soaking process, the bottle or the Eppendorf tube was constantly shaked to maximize the process. Then, the ethanol was retained. 20% of Clorox bleach with a few drops of twin 20 was added and let to soak for 10 minutes with constant shaking. The seeds were rinsed 5 times with autoclaved distilled water. Then the water was decayed and the seeds were left to dry in the laminar airflow. The seeds were now ready for in vitro culture. By using a septic technique, Three seeds each were then inoculated into a conical flask containing half MSO.
the final step in plant tissue culture would be the hardening step. Firstly, the plantlet or shoot culture from the flask were removed carefully without injuring the roots. The plantlet obtained was then cleaned and washed with tap water for a few times. The plantlets are then transferred to the flower pot containing light soil which was wet with water and was placed in a shaded area. A clear plastic bag with some holes made on it and a little water sprayed in it was then used to cover the plantlet. And finally, the plant was watered daily. Good evening to viewers reporting from ABC and the news reader for the day, Janice. Today, breaking news NDGMO groups have filed a case against a researcher of UPTC repository to strictly its operation. A group of nutritionists and environmentalists have done a research that show GMO food will affect negatively on human health and environment. A press conference has been held by UPTC Laboratory Management Team, where one of their professional scientists has come forward to justify themselves. Now we have a live television on conference. Of course, I will proceed to run my lab. Uh, we should not only focus on the cons, but the pros of the genetic modification plant. We can improve crop in terms of yield and quality of the plant. Normally, plant will produce secondary metabolites. By using this cell tissue culture method, we can um, largely produce secondary metabolites for the production of medicine in the future purpose. Genetic modified method can produce herbicide tolerant plants as well as disease free plants. By using cell tissue culture methods, favor characteristic of the plant can be inserted into the gene so that we can actually alter the genotype to get the desired phenotype. Cell tissue culture plant can be stored in a long term duration and it only requires more space to be maintained. Lastly, tissue cell, uh, cell tissue culture can be grown throughout the year without the intervening of the but by the season and the environmental factors. Thank you. Besides Dr. Yi's certification, we have also gathered views of Dr. Dan, who is a nutritionist and member of the anti jmo group. Dr. Dan, what's your opinion on GMO food? Mm, I do agree about the GMO food. Why I say so? Because according to history, when 1989, the one of the GE product killed 37 Americans and 5,000 people was get the blood disorder and somehow it will increase the cancer rates, food allergy or maybe the food product quality will decrease. For the example, scientists trying to increase the milk product but at the same time they also increase the poison and toxin in the milk. So when we consume it, there are, there's a lot of people get the cancer, breast cancer so that's why how the GMF induced the cancer risk. According to Madam Mashana, who is an environmentalist from Harvard University, 
opposes the practice of JMO left in the country. Upon the ethical issue, genetic engineering products trick to food security, livelihood and nation. It is believed that the technique used in genetically modified crop tested on livestock are unacceptable to people and religions. GE foods and crops does not only harm the human health but also cause threat to the environment. Um, according to a study carried out by the Organic Consumer Association, these GE products causes increased pesticide residue where many farmers nowadays simply start spraying toxic herbicides and pesticides as they are aware that their crops are not going to get damaged since they are high in resistance towards this toxin. This will, however, they don't realize that this will increase the toxic broad spectrum herbicides that are being used nowadays in the agriculture field. In, besides that, in 1999, Cornell University students and researchers have found that certain pollens from the genetically engineered Bt corn has become poisonous to the monarch butterflies. Uh, this proves that G crops are also damaged to beneficial uh, insects, birds, bees and soil microbes as well. Moreover, due to the high how, what would I say, due to the high uh, resistance of these GE crops towards herbicides and pesticides, there are emergence of super weeds and super pests that has been reported by researchers. Soon or later, many farmers who practices biological pest management will be unable to cope with the increasing number of super pests and super weeds. So this will be a major problem that will be faced by the farmers in their agriculture. Lastly, I would like to talk about the business opportunity of the micropropagation, such as the production of mixed color and the fluorescent roses. By utilizing the micropropagation of roses, the, it enables the production of colorful roses to replace artificial colored roses that reduce lifespan. It also enables the production of the fluorescent roses that glows in dark to save electricity and more environmental friendly. It also produces healthy and disease-free roses plants. The production of the roses will not be interfered by a season. It will also have higher multiplication rates and higher yield. This is the example picture of a fluorescent roses. Based on the picture on the right, it can glow in dark. Next, this is the example picture of a colorful roses that has a rainbow color. How can we produce glowing roses? It is produced by extracting the substances that cause glowing in fireflies or jellyfish. This slide shows that the steps required in order to modify normal roses into fluorescent or colorful roses. Firstly, the DNA isolation of the glowing substance of a jellyfish or fireflies. Next, the restriction digestion to prepare the DNA for vector cloning. Thirdly, the vector insertion of the gene of interest. 
Next, the molecular cloning by inserting the vector into agrobacterium or certain virus or some other microbes. Next, the plant cells are grown in culture. And the last step of the genetic modification is the regeneration of the plant from a cell clone, which is known as micropropagation. This slide shows that the diagram of the steps mentioned in the previous slide. This slide shows the flow chart of the propagation of colorful roses or uh, fluorescent roses. The first step is the sterilization of explant of regenerated rose. It is to remove unwanted bacteria. The second step is the culture on shoot initiation medium. It is to encourage the differentiation of shoot. The third step is culture on root initiation medium. It is to encourage the differentiation of roots formation. The last step is the culture in standard potting soil. This diagram shows the micropropagation of rose damascena. It is a hybrid rose between two roses. First, it is axillary bud proliferation. Secondly, it is shoot proliferation in liquid and agar gel medium necrosive or shoot in gel medium. Third step is the rooting in liquid medium. Lastly is hardening plants in pots. Last but not least, the targets of this business opportunity. For companies such as the Real Flower Company, Forever Floris Malaysia, and Hollywood Famous Floris and Gifts. These are the companies that are specialized in flower and they export flowers to foreign country that will allow the product to be known overseas. Not only that, this product will be profitable since it is unique and also it will encourage the act of environmental friendly.